This stuff has been sitting here for so long. I'm keen now. I'm keen to share with you guys like what, what the hell we're doing with all this stuff. Four and a half thousand kilometers, baby. That's what we're doing with all this stuff. Four and a half thousand kilometers in 13 days. Me and Nick riding around New South Wales. Holy crap. Before taking you guys through all my gear and my setup and what we're planning to do, I just want to talk about why are we even doing this? Maybe that's a question that you're asking. What the hell man? What are you what are you thinking? Four and a half thousand kilometers around New South Wales is no easy task. And um, believe you me, we know that. I mean like does there really need to be a reason why we want to go for a ride four and a half thousand kilometers around New South Wales? Not really. If you're seeking adventure, just go out there baby. Go out and just 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 do it, just go out and have some fun. COVID's been a gnarly time. We've been all cooped up, we've been isolating, we've been quarantining, and that can be detrimental to mental health. Guys, you have a backyard to explore. And that's what we're, that's what we're trying to like show here. Yes, it's, it's pretty gnarly, like 13 days though. 13 days is a long time and it's a lot of kilometers. We're like we're averaging around six and a half hours travel time between places, between stops per day. Six and a half hours travel time per day. But we are here to show you that it can be done and we are going to do it and it's going to be oh so gnarly. We're not expecting it to be easy whatsoever. I've got so much gear, so much is still happening. I'm expecting orders to still come through today. So I'm going to share with you guys what I have planned so far, where we're at, where we're going to be traveling, my bike setup, and um, <laughs> it's going to be a good time. Okay, so first out of the bag. Uh, why don't we start with this because I'm so keen on this. It's the old, the old windshield. I'm traveling at 110 kilometers an hour for most of the time. I feel like this is a very worthwhile purchase or um, how would you say it? Investment. It's the Dart Fly Screen Marlin. Um, it's the biggest one out of all of them. It's not the prettiest though and I'm all about that pretty sort of vibe I guess. Um, but I, I found out through some other various YouTube videos that I will link in the description that this does protect you from most of the wind, um, especially from your chest and I think like from your face as well. The shorter one, it stops it from the chest but it sort of pushes the wind into your face and the whole point of this is to stop fatigue or to minimize fatigue holding on. You know, you don't, you know, I don't want that. I don't want that for this, you know, ridiculous. What is it? It's like 52 hours of riding we're doing. It's insane. It's this in here, this is, oh, this is the, um, this is the pannier rack, this is from Motown Customs. So I just got this, uh, Sam from Motown Customs sent this out to me, what an absolute legend, check them out, links from the description. Um, this is just the pannier rack, so that just mounts, you know, somewhere there and there, and you can put a bag and slide over the top of it. I'm still yet to decide what I want to sort of put on this thing, thinking maybe like water and spare fuel, oh yeah, so fuel. Fuel's a worry. I'm like, I'm wigging out hard about the fuel situation because Outback New South Wales don't have many petrol stations or gas stations. And so we need to, I think like arrange on the street scramblers, like 220 Ks or something. And there's some sections where it's like 400 Ks between servos, which is like a big deal. So Nick's gonna be carrying a spare fuel tank on his bike. I'm gonna be carrying one on mine. I'm gonna try to carry at least 10 liters or something. Um, and there are some brands that do some, some cool like mounting options for your pannier rack and having like a fuel canister on the side. So I'm still sussing that out, uh, get the vibes. I think me and Nick are gonna check out a place next week. Um, but yeah, so. Pannier rack is very handy. Also, this bad boy whoo, is a full-blown Triumph luggage rack, which will need some modifying, I think, just because, if you look here, my tail tidy, this thing's gonna be hanging a lot further back and will probably block the number plate. And the indicators and lights and everything, so I'm gonna have to extend the harness a little bit and have it mount on the back of this somehow. I'll work it out, I'll work it out something. So on the back of that, um, yeah, I'm still yet to decide. Like we got, we got, a, we got some awesome dry packs that are coming from Osa dry packs. Um, I expect, I'm actually expecting them to come today, which would be mad if they came like right now. Right now, not coming, damn it. 
But these dry packs, like I'm getting a 40 litre one and uh, like a 20 litre one I think, so 60 litres all up. Um, and they're fully just tied down to the back of your seat, which is sick, so I'll put the pillion seat on. Um, I'll, we'll go downstairs and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. And so on the back of this, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe this bag? I'll show you this bag, this bag's pretty sick. Bauble Bee Backpack by 0. 0.65 degrees north. This thing is sick. I got some beers in this the other day. And like, man, they give me, they give me some stuff here as well. Car in it, I've got that sort of stuff. I've even got like a little modular thing. So this little bad boy just slides into the back there and you can put all your camera gear and stuff in there. What? Awesome. Um, what else is in here? More, more straps so you can clip this to this and just carry that around without carrying this around. Oh, this thing, it's actually armor rated, CE armor rating. So you've got mad back protection as well as um, gear protection. And we've got like, okay, have a look at So you've got these sleeves in there, be taking my Mac, so everything's gonna be nice and tidy and safe. Like, this stuff is rock solid, man. And my sticker came in, how good does that look? I'm stoked. I'm gonna get more of these made up. I'll send them out. It's gonna be a good time. They also, also sent me out this. This sort of like sits in there if you want it to. And you can put you can put like cables and stuff in there. And I think that's like it has like insulation on the inside. So you can fully put some tees in there, man. Put some beers in there, a little bit of ice. <laughs> I don't know, maybe maybe not. Ah, what else did they send me? They sent me so much stuff. I was like, I was so pumped on this. There it is. Look at that. Impact protection, 91%. There, like, what a what an awesome design. Purely for motorbike riding. This is like the, what is this, the rain cover. Got a rain cover, my viz, which is cool. Got a dust cover, because, whoo! We have got, like, we've got so much dust. We've got so much dirt riding. It's, oh, I've upgraded my shocks. Oh, guys, there's so much to talk about. And they gave me some extra covers as well, which is mad. I might have rock this one for the trip, just because it's nice and bright and stands out. And they gave me a darker color one as well. And yeah, so that's, that's the Bauble B 20, that's a 20 litre backpack. Check it out there, man. You'll be frothing. <sighs> what else, what else, what else? Um, so I bought a drone as well. Oh, baby, I'm, I'm, I've always been keen. I need to show you guys like how cinematic and epic the, the landscape is of Australia, especially the Outback. The Outback's like a typical red desert, um, just barren wasteland. One of the places that we're gonna be going through, Broken Hill, that is, in fact, a spot where they filmed Mad Max 2, Fury Road. Fury Road? What was that the latest one? Anyway, so a drone for me was just like, we need a, we need a drone, holy crap. Nick, we need a drone. I gotta teach him how to pilot as well because it's pretty hard to pilot and ride. Uh, but check it out. By the way, this is all new as well. Ooh, this all just happened yesterday, spur of the moment. Shelving. All this sort of stuff yeah, that's look pretty. This is the drone. So this thing's only like 250 grams, 249 grams, which means that just, just the weight thing, obviously that's like a massive plus because you just don't want to take so much stuff and have your bike all weighed down, especially when you're riding off road for like the amount of time that we're going to be doing it. So that drone worked out perfectly. It's a genuine Triumph pink bag. Um, so this is for the street scrambler or like the street models. Okay. Yes. So you've got the whole like plastic map thing so you can stick this thing here. Have your map in there which I will have because there's going to be zero reception. Rain cover as well which is always handy. Um, and then yes, yeah, so that's where the camera will be sitting in there. So it's all going to be like really easy to access. Another little pocket there, put some stuff in. Um, yeah, how cool is that? And that's pretty much all I can sort of show you here. But like, oh man, I just like, I just want good gear, you know? I don't really want to be stuck high and dry. I don't want to be left high and dry. Uh, I just want to have my system down, um, especially if it rains. If it rains for like three days straight and we have to ride, like we have to go through all these places, which we'll show you very soon. The last thing you want is to just either have all your gear wet or just have bad gear that just doesn't perform. And speaking of high quality, amazing gear, I haven't really shared with you guys which helmet I'll be taking yet. That's because it's not here yet. Um, they're still being boxed. They should be here next week, hopefully, maybe the week after. Um, but Foresight... 
But Foresight Helmets have um, donated two, or sponsored us with two of their smart helmets. Uh, I'm going to be doing an unboxing on that. They're packed full of features. Hey, holy crap, I reckon you guys would dig this. I really, really do. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, make sure that you check this video out. You'll dig it. I know you will. So me and Nick are going to be rocking these two helmets, Foresight Helmets. Check them out. They're an Australian brand. Really cool dudes. Um, and also, Nick's bike. I haven't shared with you what, what's, what Nick has yet. Oh, there's a spider there. Ooh, Australia. <laughs> it's the tiniest thing. Look at this. <laughs> Can you see it? But still, no matter how long I've lived in Australia for, like, my whole life. <laughs> Any spider's a spider. Nick hates little insects and creatures and stuff. He's actually, he's not really much of a camper, as I found out. So that's going to be fun. Nick. <laughs> It's actually going to be incredible. Um, so yeah, so Nick's bike. He sold his Speed Triple a couple of weeks ago. We took it for a last little run through. We did a mad um, SC Project exhaust vid. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I'll link it up here. And he literally sold that that day and then picked up his new, well, like secondhand 2008 1050 Tiger. There he is. There he is. Replaced. This is it. Look, is it? This just came today, yeah? Like how long ago? Like literally, the ute is still there. Ah, oh, that's the ute. It literally just got unloaded. So this is it. This is the one that's gonna be coming with us, baby. So he's gonna be, he's fully decked out. Like he's decked out already with like a nice big comfy seat and all the racks and everything and the, the screen. And he has a larger fuel tank. So that's why he's taking my fuel tank. I forgot to mention that earlier. Okay, let me just quickly show you guys where we're gonna be going around uh, New South Wales. I've learned so much about New South Wales since doing this. It's been really cool. All right, let's check it out. Okay, we leave on the 18th of November from Sydney to Condobolin, which is about there. Um, six and a half hours riding, it's about 470 kilometers. We'll be passing through the Blue Mountains, gone up some epic twisties around here. And we'll be also passing through a town called Bathurst, which is very known for its racetrack. So we'll do a lap of that, uh, get to Condobolin, which is about there. And then from here, we're gonna pin it to Mungo National Park. This place looks absolutely incredible. Uh, we'll be camping out there. I'd love to spend more time there and just like explore. It looks like, it looks like Mars or just something from another planet. So that's five and a half hours between Condobolin and uh, Mungo National Park and it's 438 kilometers. Day three, we'll be going from Mungo National Park um, past Mildura and then all the way up to Broken Hill. Now, this is about five hours riding and it's 470 k's again. And this is where we're pretty much right in the outback. This is, this is gonna be the gnarly spot. Um, so we're going to be staying at Broken Hill, then from Broken Hill we'll be riding all the way to Cameron's Corner, which is up there. That's where the borders of South Australia, Queensland and New South Wales meet. So we'll be checking that out. It's going to be sick. It's literally a barren wasteland out there. So this is the, this is the part where we're sort of like, you know, a bit nervous about just because there's like no reception. There's nobody for hours, hours, hundreds of kilometers. Uh, so that's going to be, that's going to be an interesting time. We're going to have a satellite phone though, just in case just in case. And then from Cameron's Corner or Fort Grey Campground where we'll be staying, we're going to be riding all the way to Burke. This is just dead straight man, there's nothing happening. It's going to be a long, long boring one. That's six and a half hours, 530 kilometers. Then from there we're going to keep on going to Texas which is up here. That's going to be a huge day. That's seven hours, 613 kilometers. We're going to Texas just because Nick loves the fact that there's a Texas in New South Wales, you know. Canadians. And then day seven, we'll be going from Texas to Byron Bay, and this is where everything starts getting a little bit more greener. We're getting into more of the rainforest sort of vibe. It'll be much nicer. That's a short four and a half hour ride, 320 k's. And in Byron, we're going to be chilling out there for a day. So we've got a day break, and we're just going to be exploring or swimming or just literally just resting our asses because holy crap. Then day nine, we'll be riding to a place called Dorigo, which is down here. It's a little bit inland, off the main road, around some epic twisties, waterfalls, everything like that. That's a three and a half hour ride. We might even have another day to just sort of explore and just, you know, ride some trails around that area. It's, it looks so nice. And then day 11, Dorigo to Port Macquarie, which is about there-ish. Day 12 from Port Macquarie to Jungog, it's three and a half hours ride, about 220 k's. So, and, and then we'll just be chilling out there again, um, exploring all the waterfalls, all the rainforests and everything. And then from Jungog, we're just going to pin it back to Sydney. Oh, is, that the, is that the front door? I think someone's here. Hello? Oh, no way. It literally just arrived. Let's get that in here.
Oh, baby. How sick is this? They gave us this liquid stove thing. I'm not sure how it works. That sort of vibe. So you put your little grill on top. That's a grill. It's literally like gonna be cooking the stuff. That's it, that's the barbecue. Done, sorted. This is the 40 liter, this is the big boy. Wow. The cool thing about these things is that it's got like a little, you just a release valve, you just unscrew that and then you roll it up and then all the air comes out and then you can compress it all down and just keep everything as compact as you possibly can. Woo, what a mad idea. Yeah, exact same stitch, 25 liters. It's got the release valve, Boop. and so that can just clip on top of the other one, and I'll show you guys very soon. I think this is Nick's backpack. That is a that is a dry backpack. Man, that looks sick. Really nice quality as well. It feels really good. Thirty liters. Man, all this stuff is so sick. Thank you so much, Osa, for sending this out. I can't believe this just arrived. Literally, like just then. So stoked. Um, what do you reckon? Let's go to the garage and fit this stuff up. Woo. This is crazy. I can't believe how much it just transforms the look of the bike, hey. Fully looks like a full-blown touring bike. Crazy, I love this bike, man. This bike is sick, look how chunky it looks. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe we're doing this, guys. I can't believe we're doing this. Okay, let me talk you through it. So the Speedo is now being moved back up to its original position. Um, this dart fly screen was so easy to put on. Um, and it looks, like it looks, you know, looks okay. Doesn't look crazy, it doesn't look too out of place or anything. Um, it's gonna block that wind off my chest and should deflect some of it up and over, hopefully. Obviously you've got the bark busters, so they're just, you know, they'll just help with the wind resistance as well and protecting your hands. Tank bag is on and in. That was pretty simple to install as well. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna be there. Gotta have my camera in there. Really easy access, maybe some snacks. Moving to the back, like how good do these OSA dry packs just stack up? Hey, let's get rid of this for a sec. Like that's pretty, that's pretty on there. Um, obviously when you're, when you're riding a little bit, you just go through and tighten them up as you're going. But they, like they're awesome. They're so good, especially the little, the little bleeder valve thing. So you just get all the air out. Just got on loosely just because everything needs to be pulled back here. I need to like make up a bracket and have the plate out there or something, especially the lights are all the way down there. Pannier rack is on, that fit no problem, just onto the, the pillion peg there behind there and onto the shock mount. I've already mounted the shocks up, but I've put the Fox Boys on. I haven't adjusted the preload or anything yet, but just going um, for a little run with this on comfort. Man, what an improvement. Cruising down the freeway, you just don't feel any of those micro bumps. It's just so smooth. It's like you're just sitting on a couch. Fox Shocks upgrade. Holy crap. Well worth it. Um, I am doing a little 
light upgrade. So I'm gonna have a couple of little spotties here from Steady Light. I'll link them in the description. Uh, I'm gonna have a couple of little spotlights there, one there, one on the other side. I don't plan on doing too much night riding, but it's more for like setting up camp if you need extra light, just to have a nice widespread or, you know. I'm doing a full blown service, changing the pads, also changing the sprocket. So I'm adding a couple of teeth into the front sprocket and hopefully that just gets me a bit more range out of the tank. I'll probably stick this up here and then maybe put a fuel tank there or something. Or maybe there, I don't know. Still trying to decide. But yeah, that's where we're at. That is, that is it. It's all becoming a bit real now. Man, I can't believe we're doing this. Four and a half thousand Ks around New South Wales. Nick, what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> no, I'm stoked. I'm actually pumped. I've been wanting to do this ever since watching, um, which episode was it? It was Top Gear and they went to Vietnam and I was, I was like frothing. I wasn't even riding bikes then. I was frothing on that video. So that obviously, you know, resonated somehow, somewhere, and for some reason. And now we're actually doing the, you know, similar thing, but just in our black backyard. Exploring our backyard, man. I think it's cool. Just getting out of the house, getting away for a little bit. Usually, you know, I'm away on tour and I go overseas and stuff. But because of COVID, we've just been all sort of like locked in. Um, and so this is just a nice way to just still get out, but you're still within your own borders and everything. So if you, if you can on doing it, just start, start settling up, man. Start getting amongst it. Some, some noise around here. Oh. I thought there was something else I had to say, but I forget. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit like and hit subscribe, um, and I'll see you when we're... No, actually, I'll see you when I do the helmet thing, because, you know, we spoke about that earlier. You will like it. You will like it. Trust me. Okay, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Peace. Is that actually... Oh, that's squashed, I think. Ugh. It is. Oh, damn it. It got rolled up in the blind. Ah, oh, I thought it looked a bit weird. Hectic. That would suck, eh? Imagine dying like that.